Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Carlos. Welcome to Can We Talk About This? Of the many cinematic treasures the 80s gave us, few were as bright as Steve Gutenberg. You make me sick. Thank you, sir, I make everybody sick. In 1983, his breakout performance as Carrie Mahoney announced his arrival and launched a decade-spanning franchise. I'm trapped here? Well, yes, we all are. With me to talk about the legacy of Police Academy is comedian Marie Kondabolu. Welcome to the show. Of course, great to be here, Jordan. We're talking about a cop comedy from the 80s. What possibly could go wrong? <laughs> what could possibly How could this go? not have aged well? <laughs> so what was your first impression watching Police Academy? First of all, it's still funny, which I okay. was amazed by. Michael Winslow's humor ages well. And yeah. to see him in his element in this movie, it's like, oh, this movie is perfect for this guy. I like Steve Gutenberg at the peak of his power. <laughs> That's terrific, really. What would it look like if it were shot today? Oh, man. Um, well, first of all, initially, I'm like, no way they could make this movie today. And now I'm like, yeah, they could. An incompetent police force is still funny. Do you have to cut all the sexual harassment that's rampant, I would say so. You yeah. have to cut uh, the bizarre homophobia scene of the Blue Oyster, where for some reason leather daddies like to slow dance. But like the bad guy going face first into a butt of a horse, that is comedy that is forever. The accident prone cop when he's trying to get to the police academy and his wife does those insane stunts. Like there's just moments that you live for. Slapstick is always going to be there. Like, the script must have been absurd if there was a script. <laughs> so, so many things in this were for a punchline, and I fully understand as a comedy writer, it's so hard to write something without hurting somebody else. But if you're looking for a nuanced take on racial tension between groups, I mean, this movie, I don't know. No. <laughs> There's the fear of the powerful black man throughout the film. Like, Hightower has supernatural black strength. It's so flimsy in terms of the writing, because it's writing for jokes, right? It, so you right. need the archetypes that, like, they are so not concerned that anyone's going to catch them on anything. I'm sorry! Sorry! You dumb fuck! The racial moment when Hooks is called a Jigaboo, the tomfoolery is kind of over, Yeah. right? It, it just came out of nowhere. No way. It almost felt like they wrote something else and the actor was like, I I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not saying that word. The fact that Copeland gets his just desserts for saying yes. a slur, they're basically saying racism is bad. So that's their big <laughs> statement on that. Can we talk about the blue oyster? I think it was in every single police academy. Someone always ends up at the blue oyster. It just feeds into that the trope of the large gay man taking away my my masculinity. And then there's the whole thing where Lassard sees Mahoney kissing another cop and he's like, You men, stop that. Which yeah. is the polite way of being homophobic. <laughs> and then when he realizes it's a man and woman, he's like, That's more like it, Mahoney. That's totally not inappropriate to colleagues making out. Right. You know, there's also homophobia towards a dog. <laughs> That's a queer. It's still funny without it. It actually survives pretty well if you take those elements out. Cop comedy still somehow works. It's classic. Thanks so much to my guest, Hari Kondabolu. This has been Can We Talk About This? I'm Jordan Carlos. Enjoy the movie.